And we're live. <laughs> okay, we're live. So I already talked to you about your header. I want a header for everyone. So I like what you said on your, your YouTube, Anarchist Superstar. But should I include graphic novelist and artist, or how would you like me to say that? That's perfect. Uh -huh, that's what I have so far. Graphic novelist, comma, artist. But your header, I really like that. Anarchist Superstar. It says a lot to me. Yeah, I like that phrase. Uh -huh. I want to know your hopes and your dreams. What are your hopes and your dreams? My hopes. Yeah. Um, my hope is to affect change, and my dreams are just to be comfortable. <laughs> <clears throat> to make a living as an artist and be comfortable? Yes. Any more on that? Um, Spend a little bit more time on that. Your hopes? What do you hope for? What are your dreams? Well, within my work, it's to make people who are kind of the underdog feel like maybe they have a chance to be on top. Mm -hmm. Something that drives me. It's really cheesy, I know. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> you should hear the other it's those damn Super <laughs> Friends cartoons. Talk a little bit about your inspirations. Is it people or literature or a film? Mm -hmm. Things that inspired you. It could be a, a novelist, a, a, a person, a friend, sure. a movement. Talk a little bit about your inspirations. Uh, inspirations definitely come from. Well, great artists. Mm -hmm. um, and Give usually, names. usually Give names. they were always the big ones for me, like Francis Bacon, yeah. uh, Andy Warhol, yeah. Keith Haring. Mm -hmm. I thought. Keith Haring, you said? Yeah, Keith mm -hmm. Haring. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what else am I going to do with my life? Someone's yeah. got to do it. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I wanted to do, somehow do what they did. Yeah. Of course, you figure out along the way that you only end up doing the things that you can do yourself. So it's, if you make your own way. But no, Andy had a Gerard do everything. <laughs> <laughs> do you know about that? Yes, he I did. do. Uh, uh, you know Gerard, he's done photo shoots with him. He did the uh, uh, paintings for him. Yeah, he did all the, the grunt work. Uh, okay, so you mentioned uh, artists. Mention some people, maybe personal people that's been um, close to you in your life, mentors, people like that. Uh, who were your inspirations as mentors, far as people? Inspirations for people, you. None of them other than being inspired by artists. Yeah, none of them. My your friends, friends. Mm -hmm. mostly always my friends. Mm -hmm. um, I, I somehow managed to always make friends with people who have overcome great obstacles, and I always found that terribly inspiring. And mm -hmm. they're the kind of people that when you meet and you just talk to them, and you know that there's a presence in them, and they've gone through something, and they're mm -hmm. still here, they're still alive. And God damn it, you know, pay attention. And I, people like that really inspire me. Cool. Make me feel good. How about films? Any films that have inspired you? Um, I'm doing. I'm not a film buff, really. Oh, I see. Um, you cartoons. Said, you said like Elevator Girls changed your life. Oh. I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing a, a series in New York in April. Well, that just made me want to blow up my office. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Elevator Girls. Films, in fact, changed my life. I uh, I I am a film buff, and I sleep with a. A film encyclopedia right next to my bed. Oh, I, really? I educate. Okay, I mean, there, yeah, there are films, of course. I mean, yours may want to blow up my office. Uh -huh. Elevator Girls. How about Inframan? <laughs> you know about Inframan? <laughs> no. Oh my god, you would love Inframan. Total Japanese sci fi, but really the most beautiful colors I've ever seen used in an. In, 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 it's not animation at all, it's it's real people. Oh, cool. Well, it's an early 60s film. But, uh, you know, I've, I've seen some great films, of course, like. Mm -hmm. But. What are your okay, favorites? Batman. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's cheesy. Yeah. Uh, Batman, Superman, two greatest films ever made, especially yeah. Superman, the Richard Donner version. Ah, uh, um, okay. And then Gone with the Wind. Oh my god, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> What do you like about that one? I just want to slap you Scarlet and then fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, next question is about your leg legacy. What kind of legacy would you like to leave? Um, not that you're going to grow up tomorrow, but... Legacy. <laughs> if you grow up tomorrow, what would you like um, to be remembered? <laughs> silly defiance that just wouldn't quit. <laughs> Did you say silly? Uh -huh. Cool, that's good. Legacy is a really... That's a, that's a concept I probably have no right to think of right now. Yeah, uh, I understand that, but I think it's important, too. I always ask about it. People have asked me what I want on my tombstone. I want to be a legend. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> legend. That's good. That's good. Legend's good. People ask me what I want on my tombstone, and I always tell them I want. I don't want a tombstone. I want to be in a marble crypt above ground 
with an eternal flame like Kennedy and fresh roses every day like every Marilyn Monroe. Day. I don't care what the cost at that point. <laughs> you did. I don't really care what the cost. And engraved on the marble, I wanted, he was some kind of woman. <laughs> That's all I can. That's all I have. <laughs> That's not too much to ask. <laughs> no. Any more about legacy you want to add? What kind of legacy you want to leave? Um, you want to inspire people? Do you, have a, do you want to become an inspiration to inspire people? I want to inspire people to feel good about themselves. Cool, okay, that's good. Okay, next two are really standard. What do you love? What qualities do you love in people are love, period? What do you love in your loves? <laughs> people with questionable, questionable sanity, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a good, I like that. <laughs> I have this particular ability to draw. You will yeah, love it, Mark. Yeah. You will mentally love it. Mentally disabled? Mentally dis disabled and mentally um, sort of on the fringes of what is, is well, the that, reality. That, that's totally, uh, that, that works because uh, that's how you drew me. I'm mentally disabled. Oh, I've wonderful. been declared <laughs> physically disabled since. I'm now physically disabled, but when I was declared disabled, I was declared mentally. mentally disabled. I didn't even know for a while. Until <laughs> well, I, yeah. I get something called a nut pass. And the nut pass lets me get on uh, all the public transportation things for a nominal fee. Uh -huh. And uh, you have to apply it to the place to go get it. They have to be uh, photographed and everything. And you have to have a doctor's criteria, one of 18 reasons and one why is. you're... And one was mentally disabled. And uh, uh, the, I went to my doctor thing. and they signed that, but I forgot to look at it. And then um, I just gave it to the lady who I was trying to get the nut pass from, the card, and she says... Uh, uh, this is not a criteria. I said, it says right here, in number 18, mentally disability. Well, this won't work. You have to go back to the doctor and start all over again. Yeah. By that time, I had chronic emphysema, and I said, what I, you really should say, doctor, is I can't breathe. So, you gave it, yeah. I, I got you know, declared. But I was actually declared uh, mentally disabled when I first got disability. Yeah. But I just didn't know. They never told me. That was the thing. No one ever said, well, hey. Maybe you shouldn't tell somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says you're going to have to appeal. They don't give it to anyone on their first try. You'll have to. You're never going to get SSI. I've got okay. it right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> mentally disabled. Uh, <laughs> I think I might have had to do with you that. You seem just Man. fine. You see really. a physical doctor and you see a mental doctor. And the mental doctor, I asked him during the interview if he could keep the door open. Mm -hmm. And then I also, yeah, one of the, he gave me this trick question. He said, what does the question people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones mean to you? <laughs> what did you say? I said, it sounds like uh, we're all supposed to get along. Then he asked me, this, I, see, and I see you have no work history uh, since 1967. How have you been supporting yourself? I said, people took care of me because of who I was. But they're all dead now. I said, Jack. Anyway, I got it. But you should, and I also, Carl said I should carry this stuffed skunk in my backpack. Uh, in my that purse. would do it. I, <laughs> yeah. start, I didn't do that, though, because Carl, Carl got it. Brilliant idea, but yeah. <laughs> extreme. So any other loves, you lo anything you love about people or things, what are your loves? Um, so just people love. who have the courage to be eccentric. Eccentric, that's a good one. But the courage to do it and not be mm -hmm. afraid of How about that. something you love, anything that's not a person? Uh, I love <laughs> Steve Owen. That's because she's a person. Who? I was going to say I love Stevie Nicks, but she's a person. Uh -huh. um, she's also a two-dimensional object, though. So. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, I, I, I love artwork that's honest. That's what I love. Oh, that's a good one. Honest artwork. And I, you, you, you know when you see it, honesty is mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. And dishonest is very obvious. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the other end of the spectrum here. What do you hate? <laughs> what do I you hate think? stupid people. Yeah. I hate hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Perfect. I hate the elephant in the room that no one will talk about. Ah. I think it's our job to point it out. The elephant in the room? Yeah. Tell me about that. You know, it's, I hate that thing that's obvious in a situation that no one wants to talk about. Like, whether it's economic, uh, it's usually a social thing. It's usually mm -hmm. like uh, gender, race, or economics. You know, it's mm -hmm. this thing that no one wants to talk about in reality. Mm -hmm. That's the elephant in the room. I see. And I hate it. That hate, they don't hate, want hate. to talk about it. Right. And, I and, and everybody sees it. You bring it. that up in your art, in yeah. your books. I, I, you bring that out point in your out. books. Yeah. And you point bring it out. Bring up the stuff. Mm -hmm. Who cares if people get mad? Do it anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, 
tell me something or somebody or something or what changed what has changed your life besides elevator girls <laughs> elevator girls have changed my life <laughs> right. a film can change people's lives I'm doing something now in New York called Films That Made Me Gay. And I don't necessarily mean made me gay. <laughs> You're like, truck stop poor number five. <laughs> no, they're, not, they're, not pornography. they're not pornography at all, and they're not gay theme films. They're snippets of things. They're not even a whole film sometimes. They're piece, that's what I'm showing. I'm showing snippets of a million things in New York. Uh, films that changed my life. They actually made me what I am now. I took for them... Because you got something from Yeah, me. I got yeah. something. And it might have, I was touched, I was stirred, I was moved. Somehow. Could have even been a comedy. And it is. Mm -hmm. I, like I said, I, I go to theater now and, and shows and events. And, and uh, if an artist can touch, stir, or move me in any One way, I know it's good.